These are the top 10 Nike sneakers for 2024 that you can grab right now. Now I should clarify that this top 10 list is not like an end of the year top 10 list. I'm not talking about specific colorways or collaborations or releases. I'm purely talking about the silhouette itself. And in order to even be on the list, the sneakers that I've mentioned have to be pretty widely available. Like you can walk into your local sneaker store and grab a pair right off the shelf. So while sure some example pairs might be pretty hyped up colorways, it doesn't mean I'm talking about that colorway in particular. I'm talking about the shoe itself. And of course, if you want to grab any of the sneakers that I mentioned in today's video, I've made sure to link them through the YouTube shopping tab on your screen. But with that being said, let's dive right into the list. Number 10, the Nike D-Book 1. As you probably guessed from the name, the Nike D-Book 1 is Devin Booker's first signature sneaker with Nike. And it's one of those shoes that when it first leaked, people were just not about it whatsoever, but it's really started to grow on people. The D-Book 1's design is heavily inspired by classic 80s basketball sneakers, which is my favorite era of basketball sneakers, so I love this shoe. There's definite Air Jordan 1 hits in there, there's some dunk hits, some Air Force One hits. It's a sick looking shoe. Now with that being said, one of the downsides of basing your shoe off of a classic 80s basketball sneaker, because you're using classic materials and classic design details, performance basketball wise, this shoe definitely leans towards the more basic side of things and the more like technical and advanced side of things. But I don't think that's all a bad thing. If you like a simpler basketball on court experience, this is a great shoe to go with, and if you want to wear this shoe casually, it's actually a great casual shoe. Comfort-wise, the shoe does feel pretty good on foot. It features a top-loaded Nike Air Zoom unit and, of course, a full-length foam midsole. Sizing-wise, I'd say go true to size and you should be okay. And when it comes to the price, you're going to pay 140 bucks. The shoe doesn't really go on sale right now because it's still pretty new, so 140 bucks is reasonably what you could expect if you find the shoe in store. In my opinion, I feel like this is the perfect modern casual basketball sneaker. You can rock it on court, you can wear it to school, doesn't matter. This shoe has you covered. Number nine the Nike Kobe 8 Pro Tro. So realistically, you could put pretty much any Nike Kobe on this list, but the Kobe 8 Pro Tro is on this list because they're releasing a bunch of different colorways, which should make it much more widely available than any of the other Kobe Pro Tros. Plus, a lot of people actually really like the way that the Kobe 8 Pro Tro performs on court versus some other Kobe Pro Tros. And for those of you that aren't aware, a Pro Tro is a performance retro before Kobe passed. He wanted to create retros of his sneakers, but not make them straight one-for-one -one retros. Instead, upgrade the technology inside the shoe to make them perform better on court than the originals did. And in the case of the Kobe 8 Pro Tro specifically, they changed the insert inside the shoe to Nike React, which is softer and more bouncy underfoot. Now, if you've been following the sneaker market, you know that Kobe sneakers are pretty hyped up and they resell pretty well, so grabbing pairs for retail is not the easiest, but because they're releasing a bunch of Kobe 8 colorways all on one day, it shouldn't be impossible to walk into your local Foot Locker and find a pair for sale. Not only is the Kobe 8 Pro Tro a good performance basketball sneaker, but it's also a cool looking casual sneaker if you're a Kobe fan or just like wearing Kobe's, it's a good sneaker to grab. However, depending on what you're going to use the sneaker for, I think that will determine the fit that you go with. So if you're wearing the shoe casually, I would recommend going up half a size. In my case, I'm a size 9. In Kobe's, I wear a size 9.5. If you were wearing the shoes for just basketball wear, sometimes people go up half a size, but in most cases, I would say they should go true to size in Kobe's because they do fit kind of snug and are actually great for on-court performance. Pricing-wise, the Kobe 8 Pro Tro retails for $180, which is high but not absurd, especially compared to other basketball sneakers available on the market. And if you're a huge Kobe fan or just like the way the sneaker looks, you're going to love the Kobe 8 Pro Tros, and I definitely recommend picking them up. Oh, before I forget, I've actually partnered with Core to give away a $200 StockX gift card to one of you guys. So I'm actually a part owner of Core, and essentially what Core is, is an app that allows you to connect in more ways with your favorite creators. And over the last few months, I've partnered up with Core to do some pretty awesome sneaker giveaways, and now we're giving away a $200 StockX credit. And all you need to do to be entered to win this giveaway is to collect the two free Core badges specifically for this giveaway. The first one is linked at the top of the description below, and the second one will be linked in the description of an upcoming video. So collect your badges good luck and with that being said let's get back into the video number eight the nike pegasus plus the nike pegasus plus is essentially the latest version of the nike pegasus turbo but renamed to plus instead of turbo 4 i'm not sure exactly why this sneaker is essentially a recovery version of the standard nike pegasus 41 and features a full length zoom x midsole and i will say that this shoe is pretty soft underfoot i also really love this white and cream colorway i think it's fire not only is the cushion of the shoe supposed to be softer than the standard pegasus but it's also supposed to be lighter on foot and more breathable and the reason for that is that unlike the standard Pegasus, which features engineered mesh, this shoe features a fly knit upper, which I actually think is softer and definitely more breathable than the standard Pegasus. Essentially, Nike is positioning this as a more premium version of the standard Nike Pegasus 41. However, as you'll see, not to ruin the list, but the Pegasus 41 is a bit higher on the list, and the reason for that is because while I think this is a comfortable shoe on foot, 
It's just not as great of a running sneaker as a Pegasus 41. I mean, it's fine, it gets the job done, but it doesn't really fit any of the traditional categories that you think of when you think of running sneakers. It's not like a, a great max cushion sneaker. It's not like a great recovery running sneaker. To me, it feels more of a lifestyle sneaker than anything else. That being said, if you're buying it as strictly a lifestyle sneaker, I think you're really gonna enjoy it. It's super soft underfoot. It's very breathable because of the upper. Like I said, in this colorway, it's very, very clean, very wearable. But the design of this shoe is definitely a running sneaker design. If you're not a fan of that, maybe not the way to go. One of the major downsides to this shoe, at least in my opinion, and I realize this is a top 10 list, so maybe I shouldn't be going over the downsides at all, but I'm going to with this shoe, is the price point. The price point is $180, which I feel like is just too much for what you're getting. I think once this shoe finally hits sale racks at like 140 bucks, this shoe is gonna be a great deal, especially for a lifestyle sneaker. But for 180 bucks, it's a bit pricey. That being said, all around, it's very comfortable, it's a decent looking sneaker, and it fits pretty much true to size. So if that's what you're looking for, and you like the way this sneaker looks, Great shoe to pick up. It's also super light, which I really like. Number seven, the Nike Air Max 186. So for those of you out there that want a bit of a history lesson, the Nike Air Max 1 is the first sneaker to feature a visible air unit in the midsole. Originally designed as a running sneaker and released back in 1986, the Air Max 1 has become one of the most iconic and popular Nike sneakers of all time, and is still released to this day. Obviously, it's on this list. However, last year, Nike released a new version of the Nike Air Max 1, the Nike Air Max 186, or Big Bubble. Generally, this shoe looks pretty much the same as a standard Air Max one. However, it features a much larger air unit in the heel and a much softer foam in the midsole. But what's interesting about this shoe is that while this larger air unit looks like a big improvement over the previous Nike Air Max 1, this was actually the size of the original air unit that was first on the Nike Air Max 1. So back in 1986, the first version of the Air Max 1 actually featured a very large air unit just like this. The problem was is that because of the materials that they had back in 1986, the material that the air bubble was made of was prone to freezing and cracking. Nike discovered that one of the ways to solve this problem was to make the air bubble significantly smaller and that's the size of the air bubble that we have today. So this shoe is sort of an updated retro based on the very original version of the Air Max 1. I know it's complicated but stick with me here. However, even though the shoe looks like the original version of the Air Max 1, the foam used in the midsole is different than the original version. So not only did they make the air bubble the same size as the original but they updated the foam to make it softer underfoot. There's a lot of changes going on but all of them come together to make a much more comfortable version of the Air Max 1s. And now a year after this shoe originally released, you can find them pretty readily available at your Nike stores or your Nike outlets or even online. When it comes to fit, the big bubbles or the 86s fit pretty much just like the original Air Max 1s, which in my opinion is true to size. And when it comes to price, they retail for $150. However, it's pretty easy to find pairs of these for under retail on certain resale sites or even on sale in certain stores like the Nike outlet. If you're a fan of the Air Max 1, I think the Air Max 1 86 big bubble is the best version of this shoe to get. And if you're a fan of Nike history and don't have a pair of Air Max 1s, this is a version to get. Now, obviously there's not as many colorway options with this version of the Air Max 1 because it's only been out for like a year. You probably have like eight color options. This is a special edition one for Air Max day, but you can grab the OG colors in this shoe, which in my opinion are the best colorways to grab. So I'd say grab the OG Royals or the OG University Reds and you're good to go. The Air Max One Big Bubble is probably one of my favorite shoes in my collection. It's not super hyped or anything. I just love the way it feels and I love the way it looks. Number six, the Nike Pegasus 41. The Pegasus line has been Nike's most popular running sneaker line for decades at this point. Pegasus sneakers have always been positioned as a daily runner. The kind of shoe that you throw on in the morning, run a couple miles and then maybe go to the office in. They're a great all around everyday shoe. Obviously they're specifically designed for running, but they also work as just a good everyday sneaker. And the Pegasus 41 is the newest iteration in the Pegasus line and genuinely is one of my favorite pairs that they've ever made. First of all, visually, they finally overhauled the Pegasus line for the first time in like three years. And I think they did a really nice job. I think it looks great. They've also tweaked the upper of the shoe. So it's a bit more breathable. It's a bit more comfortable and you have less heel slip. Of course, this shoe does fit true to size, but my favorite addition is the all new React X foam midsole, which features zoom air units in both the heel and in the forefoot which I think makes this the most comfortable mainline Pegasus sneaker ever. Now we've already talked about the Pegasus Plus, which is not technically a Pegasus mainline sneaker. It's sort of like the Plus version or the slightly softer version. Actually, the Pegasus Turbo is really what it is, but they renamed it. But this shoe is more of a max cushion sneaker. It's not like a fully max cushion sneaker, like one of the shoes that we'll talk about later on in the list, but it's definitely softer underfoot than the Pegasus, but maybe to its detriment. The Peg 41 is just a perfect everyday sneaker. It's soft underfoot, but it's not too soft. It's not gonna like feel mushy, but it's also not gonna ever feel stiff. It's gonna feel very bouncy. Plus, it's the kind of shoe that you can run in, you can wear to the gym, you can wear to the office. It doesn't matter. It's a great all around sneaker. And in my opinion, I think they've made this shoe even more visually appealing than it was in the past. So it's even easier to wear as an everyday shoe. You cannot go wrong with the Pegasus 41. Now, when it comes to price, this shoe retails for $140. Because this shoe is newer and because it's so popular, it's probably not gonna to see too many discounts, at least not for the next couple months. If you want to get a Pegasus running sneaker, but don't want to pay 
$140. You can go to last year's version and probably get it on sale. But in my opinion, I think the Pegasus 41 is a big enough improvement over the Peg 40 that it might be worth paying the extra money. I mean, realistically, it's not a night and day difference. It is definitely an iterative improvement, but I do think it's a good iterative improvement. So if you don't care about hype and you just want a good everyday athletic sneaker that you can do pretty much anything in and feel comfortable while doing it, the Peg 41 is an excellent way to go. Number five, the Nike Dunk Low. The Nike Dunk was originally designed as a basketball sneaker and originally released back in the 80s alongside the Air Jordan 1s as a high top. Unlike the Air Jordan 1, which featured air in the midsole and also was specifically designed for an athlete, the Nike Dunk Highs were released as a general basketball sneaker that came out in certain colorways to match specific colleges. And as you probably could have guessed, because the Dunk Highs released around the same time as the Air Jordan 1s and Michael Jordan was just incredibly popular at that time, the shoes just didn't do very well. However, over the next couple years, the Nike Dunk started to increase in popularity, partly due to skateboarders and also people just finding them on sale. And eventually, the Nike Dunks became one of the most popular models that Nike made. And sometime after the release of the original Nike Dunk Highs, the Nike Dunk Lows were born, basically by cutting off the top of a Nike Dunk High. And since then, the Nike Dunk Lows have eclipsed the Nike Dunk Highs in popularity, most likely because they're a little bit easier to wear. Today, in 2024, the Nike Dunk Low is still pretty much the same shoe that it was back in the 80s. It still doesn't feature an air unit. It's still definitely not the most comfortable sneaker that Nike makes, but it's very, very fashionable. And especially now that Nike is releasing so many different colorways of this shoe, and you can customize the colorways of this shoe on Nike's website, it's become one of the most popular shoes available on the market. In 2020, the Nike Dunk Low hit new heights of popularity. It was probably the most popular sneaker that year, and pairs resold for $300 to $500 depending on the colorway. However, now in 2024, you can walk into your local Foot Locker and find like eight different colorways available, some of which probably being on sale. The Nike Dunk Low is a solid everyday sneaker that's not gonna really blow you away in any aspect. It fits true to size and it costs around $115 depending on the colorway that you grab. But overall, a good looking sneaker that's very easy to rock no matter what you're wearing. Number four, the Nike Invincible Run 3. By far, the shoe is the softest underfoot cushion of any shoe on the list. The Invincible 3s feature full length, ultra thick Zoom X cushion underfoot, which makes this shoe not only incredibly soft, but also very bouncy and responsive. Up until recently, I considered the Nike Invincible 3s to be the most comfortable shoe that you could buy. Now, I think New Balance has kind of surpassed that with a couple different sneakers, but the Invincible 3 is still a great sneaker and still probably one of the softest shoes from Nike. Now, I do have to admit that putting this shoe this high on the list was kind of a struggle for me, and the reason for that is because I think the Invincible 4s are probably coming out at the end of this year, but I really have no confirmation for that. And with that being said, I don't know anything about the Invincible 4s. Are they gonna be softer? Are they gonna be less soft? I have no idea. So working off of what I know, the Invincible Run 3s are a great all-around sneaker. They are priced kind of high at $180, but because this shoe is one of those sneakers from Nike that gets updated every year, or every couple years. It probably is nearing the end of its life cycle, which means that there's a lot of sales going on, even on Nike's website. I mean, just this morning, I found pairs for like $108, which is almost $80 off of the original retail price. And if you don't mind buying a pair of shoes that in a couple months might be outdated, it's not outdated like an iPhone, like it's still gonna work for you, you can still wear it, it's still a shoe, then I would definitely suggest picking up the Invincible 3s, especially for like 100 bucks. When it comes to fit, the Invincible 3s do fit pretty much true to size, but because they're a running sneaker, some people prefer different things, so I would suggest trying them on first before you buy them, if you can. And seriously, these shoes are incredibly comfortable on foot. Whether you're using them as a recovery running sneaker, which is what they were initially designed to be, or just an everyday lifestyle sneaker, I think you cannot go wrong with the Invincible Run 3s. The one thing that I would say is that because they have such a large stack height of that Zoomax foam in the heel, they can be a little bit unstable if you are running in them, but if you're just wearing them as a day-to-day -day lifestyle sneaker, no issues whatsoever, and they might be the softest shoes that you ever put on your feet. It's wild. Number three, the Nike Air Force One Low. There's not one shoe on this list that is as iconic as the Nike Air Force One Low. There's no shoe on this list that you probably had multiple pairs of before even watching this video, like the Nike Air Force One Low. For a lot of people, when you think of Nike, you think of the Air Force One Lows. This is like the Adidas Samba or the Chuck's Converse of Nike. This shoe is so iconic and so historic. I mean, it's one of those sneakers that you don't, I don't really have to say much about because you probably already know everything about it. Just in case you don't, this shoe released back in the 80s is a basketball sneaker and it's now one of the most iconic lifestyle sneakers of all time, specifically in this triple white colorway. Now you can grab this shoe in pretty much any cut or colorway that you'd like. And yes, you can also customize this shoe on Nike's website, but the white colorway honestly is a really great way to go and you can't go wrong with it. Sizing wise, the Air Force One Low fits pretty much true to size. And even though it's an older sneaker from the 80s, it's actually surprisingly comfortable underfoot. As the name would suggest, this shoe does feature Nike Air in the midsole, which makes it pretty soft underfoot. And then you've also got this really nicely padded upper, which also feels good on the top of your foot. There are so many good things that I can say about this sneaker, how comfortable it is on foot, how good it looks, what celebrities have worn this shoe. 
probably almost all of them. But the one thing I do want to talk about, unfortunately, is price point and the fact that the price over the last like three years has gone from $90 to now $115. That's a $25 price jump for a pair of shoes that a lot of people buy, wear a couple times, and then when it starts to get dirty, they buy a new pair of. And sure, $115 when you compare it to other Nike sneakers is not insane. It just still kind of sucks because the shoe was $90 like three years ago. It didn't get that like slow iterative price jump that a lot of these other sneakers have over like a decade. It went to like $100 and then $110 and then $115 in the span of a year and a half. So even though that's kind of unfortunate to see, it's still a great sneaker. It still looks great. It's still iconic. It's still comfortable. If you don't have a pair of AF1 Lows, I definitely recommend picking up a pair because you really can't go wrong with it. Number two, the Nike SB Dunk Low. The SB Dunk Lows might be the overall most popular silhouette on the list, at least in terms of hype beast popularity. A lot of people like grabbing this shoe because it's hyped up. Now you might be saying to yourself, why does he have Nike SB Dunk Lows on the list? He's already had Nike Dunk Lows on the list. They're the same shoe. Well, actually they're not. They feature different cushioning setups. They feature a different upper construction. They have different prices and they also have different collaborations. That being said, over the last couple of years, I haven't featured this shoe on this list because it's been almost impossible to grab in store. So usually what I've done is lumped it in with Nike Dunk Lows and been like, if you can find a pair for retail, great. But if you can't, you know, it's not that big of a deal. But now that you can pretty much walk into your local sneaker store and find pairs of Nike SB Dunk Lows, in my opinion, this shoe is a much better option than the standard Nike Dunk Lows. So to give you some background on how this shoe differs from the standard pair, the Nike SB Dunk Low is actually specifically designed for skateboarding. Now SB technically stands for two different things or could stand for two different things. The first is Sandy Bodecker, the man who really made Nike SB what it is, and it could also stand for skateboarding. I actually think Nike kind of got lucky and they're never gonna specifically say what it means because it works for both. So when you think of Nike SB, you think of probably both Sandy Bodecker and skateboarding if you're a sneakerhead. But either way, because the Nike SB Dunk Low was specifically designed for skateboarding, it features a lot more cushioning. The first area where they just pumped up the cushioning is the tongue. The tongue is super thick and super pillowy. But not only that, the Nike SB Dunk Low insoles actually feature an air unit in the heel and a much softer cushioned foam area towards the forefoot, neither of which the Nike Dunk Lows have. So all around, it's a much more well cushioned shoe. Is it as soft underfoot as something like the Invincible Run 3s? Not even close, but it definitely feels better on foot, in my opinion, than the standard Nike Dunk Low. One thing I will say though, when it comes to fit, some people actually go up half size in their Nike SB Dunk Lows myself included. Sometimes the padding in the tongue area can feel like it's a little bit too much, so going up a half size will kind of reduce that, and it'll still feel fine on foot. It'll still fit you just fine. This is a size nine and a half. I'm a size nine. I like the way that this feels as a size nine and a half, but you can still wear it as a size nine or true to size or whatever you guys want to wear. It really depends on what you prefer when it comes to this kind of pair of sneakers. Now, over the last few years, trying on a pair of Nike SB Dunk Lows was not easy because they were not easy to find. Nowadays, because there are so many pairs available and they're not really selling out the way that they used to, it's a lot easier to walk in the store and find a pair that fits you. So what I would suggest for this shoe in particular, definitely try it on to see which size fits best for you. Sure, you can get away with true to size and you can also get away with going up half a size, but find the fit that fits you best because you are spending $125 on this pair of shoes, which is not a lot compared to some of the other shoes on the list, but more than it was a couple years ago. Plus, if you find the fit that you like and there's a pair of collaboration Nike SB Dunk Lows that you really want that are completely sold out, you'll know which size to go for when you buy the shoe online. Actually, that kind of brings up a good point. So the Nike SB Dunk Lows are one of the most collaborated on silhouettes of all time. This shoe has had some of the most iconic sneaker collaborations of any shoe ever. My favorite of 2024 so far are the Futura Laboratory Nike SB Dunk Lows. The shoe looks absolutely amazing. If you guys didn't grab a pair of these, I'd suggest paying resale because I think it's worth it. But for sneakerheads, the Nike SB Dunk Lows are one of those grail sneakers that have had so many crazy collaborations, like the Staple Pigeons from the mid 2000s, which were one of the first sneakers that ever had like a crazy lineup and possibly fight. Uh, it was all over the newspaper. So if you're trying to grab a pair of sneakers for the sneakerhead friend in your life, or you want to grab a pair of sneakers that kind of makes you look a little bit like a sneakerhead or possibly a skateboarder, I definitely recommend grabbing the Nike SB Dunk Lows. Number one, the Nike Zoom Vomero 5. It's crazy to me how popular this shoe has become. I thought the hype for the Vomero 5s would die out in like a year or two, but it's been almost three years at this point, and this shoe is still one of the most wanted and worn and popular sneakers of the year. So as you may have noticed, most of the sneakers on this list are legacy sneakers and not really new silhouettes. A lot of them releasing back in the 80s, 40 years ago at this point, and are still very much popular to this day. Well, the same sort of thing has happened with the Nike Zoom Vomero 5. However, this shoe is a little bit newer than something like the Nike Dunk. The Zoom Vomero 5 first released in the 2000s, and now 20 years later, has had this insane resurgence of popularity. And as you might be able to tell from the fact 
fact that this shoe is number one on my personal list, I definitely agree with the hype for this shoe. First of all, the Zoom Vomero 5 is a really good looking sneaker. I mean, it's aesthetic definitely fits within that sort of 2000s running sneaker trend that we're having right now, which would make sense because this is literally a 2000s running sneaker. But I personally think the style of this sneaker transcends that trend. And this is a shoe that no matter when you wear it, it's gonna look good on foot. But not only does it look good on foot, it also feels good on foot as well, which is one of the most important things when wearing a pair of sneakers, obviously. This shoe features a very breathable and pretty lightweight mesh upper, which allows for a lot of flexibility and of course, a lot of airflow. Moving towards the back of the shoe, the heel area is very well padded, which does a nice job of not only locking your foot into place, but also giving you some cushion where you need it. But 50% of the comfort of this shoe comes from the midsole, which sounds like that should be the case for every shoe, but like we've talked about with some of the other shoes on the list, they're way more comfortable underfoot than they are on the top of your foot. The midsole of the sneaker comes in Cushlon foam and features a Nike Air Zoom unit, which makes it very soft and responsive underfoot. And it's actually a really great balance to the upper of this shoe. It's not too soft underfoot, but it's definitely soft enough to be very comfortable. It's a good amount of cushion for all day comfort that's not gonna feel like you're standing into a pile of like, Bouncy mush, not a great analogy, but you get what I'm saying. In my opinion, the cushion is a perfect balance between softness, but not too much softness. Fit-wise, the Nike Zoom Vomero 5 does seem to run pretty much true to size, and you can grab pairs right now for a retail price of $160, again, through the YouTube shopping tab on your screen. The good news is, though, if you've been wanting to grab a pair of these for a while, and you don't really care as much about the colorway, you can actually find pairs on sale for even cheaper than that. The cheapest that I've seen so far is like $99. Now, that's kind of few and far between. Usually, when they go on sale, they're like $100. 120, but still you're saving 40 bucks for pretty decent colorways. That being said, if you're going for one of the more popular colorways like this one, you are probably gonna have to buy it on the resale market. I actually paid like $200 for this pair, which sounds stupid for a pair of $160 Nike running sneakers, but I really like this colorway. I was willing to pay for it because I'm gonna wear this shoe all the time. It's just a great all around sneaker. And if you haven't tried the Vomero 5, I definitely recommend it. And realistically, you're not gonna have to pay resale. There are so many good colorways available. They keep dropping more and more colorways. And it's the kind of shoe that you can wear with any fit, whether it's shorts, long pants, sweat, pants, it doesn't matter, you can rock this with anything and it'll look good. This shoe has been number one in a lot of my top 10 lists, which is kind of wild for a 20 year old pair of sneakers, but seriously, this shoe is awesome. But hey, that pretty much wraps up the list for today. Let me know your thoughts on this list in the comment section down below, whether you agree with it, whether you feel like I left some things off, whether you didn't like the order, doesn't matter. Let me know all those thoughts down below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and you want to see more content just like this. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one.